Hey, it's Kylie from Painted Wing. In today's video, I'll be going over my sketching process. I get this requested quite often, so I thought I'd do a demonstration on how I drew this woodpecker. At the end of the video, I'll show some of my painting process as well, but the full tutorial will be on my Patreon. For my drawings, I like to use hard pencils. I have a range of different hardnesses from H to 8H. These are my favorite type of pencil to sketch with because you get these pencils pretty sharp and if you don't use a lot of pressure, the lines appear very light, which will help them erase easier. You don't want to press down too hard with these pencils because they can leave an indent in the paper. So even if you were to erase the line, you'd still see an indent. And why this is a problem with watercolors is because the paint will want to pool there. For my woodpecker drawing, I'm going to go from general to specific, meaning I want to get a layout of the body and get everything proportioned out before going in with the details. For my initial sketch, you can see I'm using very basic shapes and lines. I'm just looking at my reference image while I sketch this piece. After I get a decent sketch drawn, I'll be adding another sketch on top of it. For this layer, I'll be using a 2H pencil instead of a 3H pencil, which means the lines will appear a little darker and thicker. I'm also going to make sure to sharpen my pencil. For this layer, I'll be erasing some of my previous lines that don't quite look right. Now I'll be drawing out the pattern on the face and draw the eye as well. Since I'll be painting with watercolors, I don't need to add every single detail. I just want a nice layout of the painting. Now that my drawing is coming together, I'll be creating my final sketch. I'll begin by erasing my previous lines. I'm not fully erasing the lines though. I just want the pencil marks to be very faint so my next layer will stand out.
For this layer, I'm using the same pencil as my last layer. Now that the proportions are figured out, I'll be drawing a little more stylized and adding more details. In my videos, I like to focus on watercolor techniques. I just don't think I'm the best person to be learning how to draw from. If you want to improve your drawing skills, I'd recommend learning the fundamentals first. I would also highly suggest taking an in-person drawing class. If that option doesn't work for you, I would look into drawing books or online video lessons. If you have any personal suggestions, just leave a comment below. In order to improve my drawing skills, I try to take on new challenging subjects and draw a lot. Here you can see my sketch for the body is simplified, because I'll be using a textured wash to fill in this part. Here I'm drawing little details for the feet. Normally, I'll just start painting after the sketching process, but if your sketch doesn't turn out as neat or you couldn't quite erase certain lines, you can always transfer your sketch onto new watercolor paper. The two methods I use are either using a light pad, like this thing here, or graphite paper. My light pad isn't plugged in, but if it was, it would shine a light through both pieces of paper, and then you'd be able to trace the lines from your initial sketch. This isn't my go-to method, because I usually paint on watercolor blocks from arches, and the light cannot go through those. So instead, if I need to transfer a sketch, I'll use graphite paper. I often do this for more complicated paintings, in case I mess up my first painting. So how it works is one side of the paper is coated in graphite. So for the layers, you'll have your new sheet of paper on the bottom, and then you'll have your graphite paper with the graphite side facing down, and then on top of that you'll have the sketch you want to transfer, and then you'll trace the lines. Sometimes the graphite paper is coated in too much graphite, so before using it, I'll lightly wipe it with a dry paper towel to get the excess graphite off. So this paper isn't working for the transfer, and that's because the paper is too thick. Sometimes they don't show up if you don't press down hard enough, but this time it's because of the paper thickness. So here's an example on printer paper. So I traced some lines, and you can see where they showed up and then I can go in and redefine the lines that got transferred. I like transferring sketches, just in case I mess up my first painting.
So here's some examples of using the same sketch to create two different paintings. So here are some fox portraits I painted. I painted the one on the left first. I thought the color turned out too light, and I wasn't too happy how the eye turned out as well. I could have added an extra layer of orange to increase the intensity of the paint color, but by doing so, I would cover up the paint texture. So instead, I just retraced my sketch and started new. My paintings don't normally take a lot of time to paint, but with the techniques I use, things can be either hit or miss. Watercolors are not the most forgiving medium. You can't really cover up mistakes, and adding too many layers can muddy things. Here are some other foxes I painted. I was practicing how to paint foxes the other week. I think I painted about five or six of them. The one on the left was my first painting. I ended up redoing it because I thought I overworked things a little. I wanted the painting to look more light and soft, and to have more texture to it. For both of these examples, neither piece is either right or wrong. I just had different goals I wanted to achieve. Now I'm going to show you guys how I paint my woodpecker. If you watch the drawing portion of my video, you can see how the way I sketched is reflected in how I'm painting. The parts where I added more detail and I'm using a smaller brush is where I drew in more detail as well. The less detailed parts are where I'm going to paint more loosely. Sometimes for the loose parts of my sketch, I won't draw anything at all. I'll just freehand paint the portion completely. I'll have the full step-by-step -step painting tutorial on my Patreon. Here I'm getting to a loose part of my painting. When you use a wet on wet technique, the paints will granulate in a unique way. So even if I recreated this piece, the two pieces wouldn't be identical. You can tell in some areas I'm allowing the white of the paper to show through. I feel like it gives the piece a sketchy unfinished look that I really like.
And here's the final painting. Thank you so much for watching. I think my next tutorial will be of a bumblebee. What are you guys working on? I'd love to know in the comments. Have a great day.